Welcome to Rapid Art. My name is Paul Peterson. Today, I'll be talking with Desi Schoenweiss from Black Hills State University. She is a, a professor of art. I think this is her sixth year. Oh, this is my ninth year. Oh, your ninth year? Okay. Yeah, then. yeah. I got, I got a hold of the, some old information. Um, <laughs> all right. So, and she is currently on the part of the on the rapid city arts council mm -hmm. and um i don't know what else is going on i kind of want to focus on this f cast thing i just looked at the f cast youtube page or the youtube channel and i was surprised to find that it wasn't getting a lot of traffic so i'm hoping we can maybe direct a little traffic i've got a little traffic they've got a little traffic <laughs> Anyway, yeah. so what? Anything else going on, or anything else you'd like people to know about you? Um, well, let's see. I mean, since the pandemic started, there really hasn't been a whole heck of a lot going on. Um, before the pandemic, I was traveling a lot, and I'm trying to work on a research project uh, documenting my old neighborhood and its destruction to make way for a runway. Um, it happened over a 20 year period, and that had been a book project that I had been involved with for the last. 10 years of my life that I'm trying to finally put the pieces together. And I was on a sabbatical in the spring and my sabbatical got cut short because of the pandemic. Um, oh. So I had to kind of jump into basically hunker down here and uh, kind of jump into some other work mode stuff. So, yeah. And, and so your, your, um, your old neighborhood, that would be in St. Louis. In St. Louis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, um, are these, uh, is this like a new series? Is this something you just started or is, I mean, are there might be, might there be some paintings floating around that we've seen? You know, um, I, when I discuss that particular research project, it's actually more of a documentary of what happened over a 20 year period. I did some photographs. Um, I mean, well, I say some, I took about 12,000 photographs um, yeah. at the very end stages of my neighborhood being destroyed that I was going to feature in as part of this book uh, collection that I'm putting together. In my own personal painting work, the uh, various images and motifs of airplanes show up just because it's part of my conscious constantly, you know, af after growing up, you know, having a neighborhood that's going to be destroyed for an airport, you know, there's always this idea of airplanes in my, in my uh, consciousness, you know, I was actually going to say my uh, awake consciousness, but even when I sleep, I even dream of airplanes and stuff too. So, so does living kind of weird. In South Dakota, in a small town, I mean, does that somehow clash with this urban sort of like wiring? Like your brain is probably wired for an urban environment. And Very here, much so. <laughs> yeah. I've heard of people moving here from Chicago and kind of losing their mind mm -hmm. because it's so, I mean, well, you know, if you go east, just 50 miles, everything's flat. Mm -hmm. I mean, have, did you experience it? I've always found that interesting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I guess even yeah. more so of a culture shock is I actually came here via San Francisco. So I lived in oh. San Francisco for two years and then ended up here. So, um, I, you know, it's funny because a I, I love it here. You know, I mean, I've always loved hiking in nature and mm -hmm. just being outside, you know, just the general you have to be you have to like you have to like the outdoors if you're going to live in the Black Hills kind of thing. <sighs> Um, yeah. but also, you know, spearfish I find is, it, it's eclectic in its own way. You know, I mean, the city is very eclectic and the city has amenities, but, you know, spearfish has its own sort of like strange variety of amenities too. And I find that the personalities, the people, um, you know, really just as, is, is a microcosm of what you would find in a, in a larger city. So no, it's, it's, I, I mean, yeah, it's shocking at first, you know, I can't order sushi at three o'clock in the morning, but you know, I can still get sushi and spearfish. <laughs> so I can't complain. Right. <laughs> well, what I like about spearfish is that, you know, I think because partly probably because of the university, there's a lot of people that come and go. And mm -hmm. so it's small town, but it doesn't seem to be um, small town in the same way, maybe, you know, a town that's been occupied by the same families for generation after generation after generation yeah. of a small town. So, it, I, oh, um, anyway, yeah. hey, can we look at, I thought we'd maybe look at um, the doll's website 
real quick. Mm -hmm. If I can figure out how to share the screen. Um, let's see. Okay, here goes. Chrome tab. And all right, so this is the okay. Wait, is that showing up on StreamYard? Yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so this is the dolls website. So if there's anybody out there that wants to know what's going on, um, at least at the doll or anything associated with the Rapid City Arts Council, this is the place you go. And in particular, I'm kind of talking, we're talking today mainly because of this fall colors art studio tour and every year there's uh a, i mean i don't it's probably been going on for maybe five or six years there's this studio tour is that right mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um roughly and they there's a select group of artists that generally would normally open their studios to visitors over uh you know a weekend sometime in the fall this year it's all online it's virtual and each artist has spent a lot of time putting together a video that is archived on a youtube channel and here's desi's so you go to the doll website it's under events for some reason i couldn't my brain didn't want to uh, recognize this as an event it was something else but here it is under events there's me um, here's Desi. <laughs> okay. And so if you could check this out, give it some views, I think that would, it would, uh, help the artists out. And it's just, I mean, the whole idea I think is to raise awareness of what, what's going on in the arts in the Hills. And if you're a person who wants to know right now, it's pretty easy to find all this stuff just, you know, while you're at home. Am I missing anything? Like you're on the Arts Council. Was this part of a, um, was there a, like a plan as far as dealing with the the pandemic and, and everybody kind of being locked down, staying at home? Yeah, um, you know, unfortunately the Arts Council shut down, you know, pretty much when the rest of the world shut down too, back in March. Um, we okay. were closed for about, I think 30 days or so. And um, when we opened up, uh, we developed a uh, mask policy. Um, actually, when we first opened, we even had a reservation only policy where uh, individuals had to call into the doll ahead of time. Now we are um, open to the public, but we do keep careful numbers of traffic of individuals who walk into the space. And we do require masks everywhere. We even sell masks in the gift shop, mm -hmm. uh, which are you know created by um, images of local artists on the front. Um, uh, you know, everybody loves the, um, Oh yeah, there's just the, there's just so many great masks. I was just trying to think of some of the some of the great ones. Sarah Rogers, of course, uh, has a design. Um, and the Fall Color Studio Tour, as far as I know, and Becky Grismer has been one of the one of the individuals. I know there's many individuals behind the uh, whole committee putting it together in conjunction with the Rapid City Arts Council. Uh, she really put together a lot of the slides, the slideshows, um, the designs, and uh, she's just a, a fantastic person in general. Um, so big shout out to Becky. And, you know, I think that all of the videos of the Fall Color Studio Tour is amazing. Um, I had some technical issues with mine, so mine is pretty, probably one of the worst ones on there. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, it was still a lot of fun to put together. Um, I've been doing a series of paintings on grocery stores just because of the start of the pandemic. Um, we really were focusing on essential workers and um, individuals in, you know, healthcare workers, grocery workers. Uh, who are the most in essential in society to keep society running, even though um, we are kind of in lockdown mode. I used to work in a grocery store. Um, that was my first job, actually, at 16. Uh, and I worked through my early days of college in a grocery store. I loved it. Um, I just love the aesthetics of just so much information at once when you're walking down aisles. It's one of the things that I miss the most is, um, you know, I'm actually very much immunocompromised and I haven't been grocery shopping at all since February. Mm. And I really 
miss it. Uh, I miss it dearly. So I've actually been doing some paintings of uh, a couple different um, grocery store images, been kind of actually working with um, the beginnings of the supermarket. Uh, so some images that were, um, I've been appropriating from the 1960s that were just sort of quick snapshots or, or such. Um, but I've also been kind of sneaking in some modern aesthetics as well into these images and, you know, changing them and altering them into some sort of like how the grocery store has evolved and kind of creating these sort of, um, even though there's sort of big spaces with lots of people, there's these sort of like weird isolated moments when you're by yourself. And so it's sort of, you know, try to seek and find those moments, you know, within the paintings. Uh, the paintings are overwhelming, they're big. Um, the one that I had in my, uh, in my fall color studio tour, uh, the ghosts, I, I'm calling them all ghosts. Um, there is a certain certain feeling of of even though you're overwhelmed with all of this, all of this visual information, all of these labels, all of these things that are marketing towards you and buy this, buy that, this is on sale, all of these bright colors, there there's still a very lonely experience just sort of pushing your cart and walking through the grocery store at the same time. So it's it's it, it's such a weird space, grocery stores. And so I've been kind of playing with and exploring more and more about the grocery store space um, in my work lately. I spent a so. lot of time thinking about grocery stores too. Mm -hmm. Mostly like what, when I can go to avoid the most people. That's <laughs> kind of my thing. Okay. <laughs> is that, um, all right. Is that, so is, are you working on those? I mean, do you have a show in mind or are they just at this point, just kind of individual paintings that are, I mean, can we look forward to seeing them somewhere? Um, actually not yet. Um, I was going to put them into, uh, actually there was a couple paintings I was going to put into the, um, artists in the black Hills exhibition, uh, right. that was supposed to be this past summer. I probably will put them into next summer's, um, artists in the black Hills exhibition, but I've actually been putting off, uh, all exhibitions except for the goods. I did put a piece in the goods this year, uh, but I've been kind of putting off exhibitions just because I know that a lot of you know galleries are not really getting the foot traffic right now. And I'm just kind of using this time to make. So I'm looking forward to next year of just kind of putting things out and you know really just kind of uh, being able to go into spaces and buy other people's art. And I'm looking forward to being able to see that activity again. But right now I'm just kind of using this time to just sort of exist in my bubble and just keep making so so okay what's going on at school i mean <laughs> classes have resumed again and yes. <laughs> um i i have a a couple students a couple guitar students but um we've been yeah. meeting in my studio so i haven't really even been on campus um can you know are you um are the classes taking place virtually or in the classroom or is it a combination or combination combination um mm -hmm. you know because i mean earlier i spoke that i have my own sort of immune issues right and um so i've been doing some zoom lecturing from home and that's actually been surprisingly working out better than i than i expected i have a document camera set up at home where i've been um doing drawings and record doing some recordings but most of it is actually happening synchronous which is live mm -hmm. and uh i've also been in the classroom as well with masks and only a small amount of students so all of our students in the studio classes uh, at Black Hill State, um, they've been so patient. They've been so wonderful. And even though that we have all of us professors have been like really giving them very, uh, a very interesting schedule. You know, we have very full classes. Uh, we have hit about 18 students. Okay. Well, thanks, Desi. That was fascinating. I don't know what happened. Anyway, Desi's gone. Hopefully she comes back. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. What can, what can we do? Let's take a look. Anyway, this is Desi's Artist of the Black Hills page. I'm guessing a dead battery. A dead battery usually is the culprit in all this. That's why I'm hardwired. Anyway, so if you really want to find out more about Desi, you can go to our Artist of the Black Hills page. This is a page that showed up um, near the top of the Google search, so it's really easy to find. 
Um, she, I think, looks like here. You could take a look at her supermarket series or the beginning of it. Um, what else is going on? I better check to see if she's back. Ah, you're back. Hey, I'm back. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> Usually it's a battery, a dead battery, but um, I don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so teaching. Um, so teaching, yeah. yeah. So we have very full classes, right? Um, we have 18 right. students in our class. So we've been dividing our classes in half. So we will have nine in one, one session, nine in another session. Everybody's wearing masks. Um, everybody is socially distant, six feet apart. Uh, we're doing a lot of, um, I'm doing a lot of teaching outside of class time, you know, a lot of one-on-one -on -one Zoom stuff with students uh, just to kind of get them up to speed. And, you know, there are students that are in quarantine, isolations and cannot come to class. So we're doing, it's a lot of one-on-one, of -on -one, but, you know, everybody is really being very, very kind, patient, um, communicating, taking care of each other, uh, socially distant, taking care of each other. And, you know, the, I find the students are really kind of checking in on each other. And um, it's been, um, it's been a hard semester. I'm not going to lie. It's been a lot of work, but it's also been a semester that's really kind of opened my eyes to, um, you know, the backgrounds of our students, where they come from, their needs. Um, and, you know, the fact that they are so driven, um, and I'm just hoping that when this thing lifts, uh, that they are going to be willing, able to just put themselves out there and just show the world all of the great things that they've made in this time. So with the, the use of technology, I mean, the, maybe the new use of technology that was maybe already available, do you see any positive outcomes from all this? Like maybe going into the future? That I Yes and no. I mean, I think that technology is maybe teaching us just how important it is to have <clears throat> have that one on one discussion and connection. You know, um, looking at artwork on a screen is it is a nice tool that's available, but it's 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 a completely different experience than walking into the Louvre and seeing, you know, brilliant works of art in person right? Like it becomes a completely oh, yeah. different experience when you really live work live. Um, one of the things that I teach my, my future teachers, you know, especially I teach, um, painting. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Is that you have to, you have to really teach stuff live, you know, for things to be communicative. It has to be in person. It has to be real. Um, you know, I think that right now we're supplementing things with videos and YouTube and Zoom and all of this, but uh, it really is proving to me that education happens in a one-on-one -on -one real world live experience. So I think that, you know, technology is great as a supplemental tool and I'm glad that we have this sort of as a backup, but it's not replacing anything at all. Okay. Um, well, hey, you're in your studio, right? Is there uh, sort of yeah? <laughs> or, is yeah. there okay? I think we're gonna. I mean, that was great. Thanks. Uh -huh. Can you somehow give us a little spin, like a spin the camera around so we get a three D kind of, if possible. All right. Well, you have nice right. light. You have amazing yeah, I light. I know. I love this room. I love wow. this room so much. So. I mean, don't okay. show us any more than I mean, you know, whatever. I know I cleaned yeah. behind me just enough so I could yeah. do this. And then we're getting into uh, my kitchen here. <laughs> but Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, oh, yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah. That's great. Um, can you say goodbye to everybody? And then right. we can still visit for a minute if sure. you have a second. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Okay, thanks for watching. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and checking out the Fall Color Studio Tour on the Rapid City Arts Council <laughs> website at the doll. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Bye.